to the Bible spoke about on the flip side. Right now, I'm going to go to the flip side. In the last days, there will be a handful of people who build their Christian faith with cheap and perishable materials. Wood, hay, straw. Now, you try to picture a house with the strongest and most unshakable foundation being laid. And there comes someone, just use straw to erect a wall, use the wood and to build the doors, and use the hay to cover the ceiling and all. I mean, not even to mention fire. It can't even stand the test of wind. Am I right? Now, you take a moment to think about believers who tries to build a Christian faith by their flesh. There's no price to pay. There's no dying to sell. They will just come to church at their convenience and they serve God by their own changing preferences. And they find no pleasure in submission to God. And he only listens when he thinks it's right. <laughs> now, I always have troubles with believers who only listen when they think it's right. Now, if you only listen when you think it's right, what does obedience mean to you? If you only attend church out of convenience, what is obedience to you? If you only listen to the pastor and the preacher, if they sound right to you, I mean, what is obedience? Of course, we are mere men, imperfect men, but put in this high priestly position to teach the Word of God, to shepherd, to lead, and that includes making decisions. And we being imperfect is such that everyone will learn obedience to God ultimately. So if you don't understand obedience, you are not a truth, ob truth abider. You are not. You are a person who listens to what you think is right. It's just like the church of Corinth. They have no regards to what is obedience and what is the unchanging truth principle. And that's why they look to men. I prefer Paul, so I look to Paul. I prefer Apollos because I'm a Jewish background, so I look to Apollos. Now, is this the kind you think they are following Paul or Apollos? They are following themselves, their own tendency and preference. It's the same thing, I tell you. If you look at the church of Corinth, if you don't get this root problem right, it's going to spread to every other thing. And if you look at the book of Corinth, it's going to spread to a point where they make comparisons, where I speak in tongues, you don't speak in tongues. I prophesy, you don't prophesy. And that division goes on. Because everyone wants to follow their own tendencies and preference. Not Paul, not Apollos. That's only self-deceiving. And eventually, you will have all the knowledge all the gifts, but you are loveless. That's why 1 Corinthians says, if you speak in tongues, so what? If you have all the knowledge, so what? If you don't have love, when you are truthless, you are loveless. Now, I've been in church 30 over years. Almost all my life I spent in church, I've seen tons of Christians. There's no shot of Christians with zeal. You can anytime find a Christian with zeal. And when you see a Christian with zeal, you know they serve with their personal convictions, strong convictions. And I tell you that conviction changes. Well, I used to be so passionate about this group of people, and then come another time, you know, well, I'm passionate about that. The other group of people now, this change, changes. But I'm looking out for people who are truth abiders. Unless you are a truth abider, then you know how to serve God faithfully, and you know you serve Him out of grace. Not that you are in any way better and the rest of the people. So I pray in the year 2020, be grace and bracing. Having done so much, you know that it's the grace of God upon you so that you may remain humble and be truth abiding. Being truth abiders far supersede someone who is zealous for the Lord. Zeal doesn't get you far, but you have the truth as your anchor point. And I want youths and young people to be raised up as such a ministers, grace and bracing and true abiding ministers before the Lord. And we're going to take the whole year to learn about this.